who, who gives this woman to this man? I do. Y'all look great. Can you just face me right here? Face me. Come on. Wow. We made it. <laughs> <laughs> Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we want to celebrate this great occasion. We celebrate them coming together of Will and Michelle. And we ask you to visit us now. Come, Holy Spirit. Come with your mighty presence your mighty love and touch every life here as we witness and celebrate this great event in jesus mighty name amen amen you may be seated this is really fun because i've known will for quite a while i knew will's dad and um, i've known lorna and I recently got to be introduced to Michelle. And I'm just I'm very happy to be here. And these wonderful people, left and right, everyone's looking so pretty and handsome. But it is a special thing. You know, I think about weddings. I think about Jesus, that the very first miracle that he ever performed was at a wedding. That's kind of cool. People look at Jesus as being religious, but he is really, uh, he's really lover of human life. And by doing this miracle at a wedding, he was really putting his stamp of approval. He's saying, listen, this is cool. And I'm celebrating with everybody else. So this is the day to celebrate. Whatever's going on out there in the world, we don't care right now. We are here to celebrate this because God celebrates it. I think about marriage, I'm not talking long. <laughs> in the beginning, no, I'm not going there. I'm just, but I just wanna say that marriage is the oldest institution in the Bible. And it's God's plan and God ordained it and then God said these words he said he that finds a wife finds a good thing you have found him you found a good thing will in Michelle and Michelle you found a good thing in your man will and he said he will obtain he'll obtain favor of the Lord now the Bible has some things to say about your roles according to the Word of God because we were created spiritual be beings living in a human body. This is our earth suit. If your earth suit fails on you, you gotta get off the planet. You have, you're only allowed to stick around the planet if you have an earth suit. But the thing about God, you know, God has power, but that's not who he is. He is love. And I'll say this to you, because God is love. It didn't say he has love, it said he is. He is love. And because he is love, therefore he has power. And the greatest power on earth is the love of God. That accepts people and loves people and forgives people if they'll come to him. And so marriage is an expression of Christ in the church. Christ being the bridegroom and we the church being the bride but the love that god shared us with jesus is that the world was separated from god because of the wrongdoings the sins but when jesus came down he bore all the sins of humanity on the earth so that they could be made one with god and the, the goal of a marriage is to become one one in your hearts, one in your vision, one in your goals. And that you can, when you become one, 
You enjoy life. It's like, uh, it's like um, there's a joy in all that you do and, the, and life becomes large. So the Bible has things to say regarding the woman and the man. And I'm going to just read this just real shortly. Like I said, this will be short. They gave me no instructions, so what can I say? It's very dangerous to turn a preacher loose. But we'll be out in four or five. In the book of Ephesians, when Paul wrote this, and he spoke about the man's role and the woman's role. And he says the following. Um, Now, when I start this line off, in the world, we're going to get, the world will, will buck up at this statement. But I'll say the word before that. It says that we are to submit ourselves one to another. You know, the Bible talks about being kind to each other. To be tender-hearted. To be gentle with one another. And so the Bible says that wives, submit yourselves to your husbands as in the Lord. For the husband is head of the wife, and so also Christ is head of the church, and he is savior of the body. I want to stop right there. Right about there, you throw that in the world, they get upset, but they don't understand. We're not talking about equality, we're talking about order, divine order. Out of 1 Corinthians 11, it talks about there's God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. But the order is, is God the Father's first, God the, the, the Son is second, and the Holy Spirit's third. If I ask you, is Jesus equal to God the Father? The answer is yes. Jesus is equal in power, in might, in majesty. The Bible says all the worlds were created through him. Someone says, well, I don't understand the Trinity. We'll join the club, neither do I. But the Bible says that, that, that they're one, but they're expressed as God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. But the reason I bring it up is this. They're one and they're equal. So it is in marriage. You're equal. In fact, you're co-heirs with Christ. So you're equal. But there's a divine order. So what does that mean? This word gets a little heavy for you, Will, but I'm going to keep on reading. Because it says here, Husbands, love your wives, just as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for her. It's amazing how he addresses that to the man, not to the woman. Why? Because you're the head. He expects you to lead in love. In lead in protecting her. Lead in caring for her. When a man makes it his goal to make the woman the center of his life and to pour his love and affection and admiration upon her, she will respond with respect and honor to you. But that's the secret formula. You've got to honor her. And you've got to love her as Christ loved the church. How was that? Christ gave his life for us. So he's asking you be willing to give your life for Michelle. If you have questions, we'll do this after the wedding. But it's but then he goes on to say, um, husbands love your wives just as Christ loved the church and gave himself for her, that he might sanctify her and cleanse her with the washing of water by the word. And then it goes on to say, so husbands ought to love their wives as their own body. For no one hurts your body, you want to take care of your body. He says, I want you to take that kind of care of your wife. And then it says, for, the, it says, um, for no one has ever hated his own flesh, but nourishes and cherishes it, just as the Lord does the church. Then it goes on to say this, this, for this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. And then the verse, last verse in 33, it says, Nevertheless, that each one of you, in particular, so love his own wife as himself, and let the wife see that she respects her husband. So the import from the word is simply this. You're the head, but you need to lead in showing love, in showing forgiveness. If there's a conflict, you're the lead to bring reconciliation. You're to lead spiritually. And when you do that, God's going to honor you. 
And so what that does, it forces you to go into Christ. Like, Lord, I'm going to need your grace. And the Bible says we come boldly to the throne of grace, that we might obtain mercy and find grace, help in time of need. He will pour out a grace upon you, and you can flow as one. It's going to be wonderful. Are you excited? Yes, sir. <laughs> All right. Well, I want to just say this. I'd like you to take your flowers. If someone could take them hold for her. And you, could, and you just kind of face each other. And you can hold hands if you want. It's up to you. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to give out what you pledge to each other. And I put this out here to make it so that you, the man, will begin. And so you do this before God. You do it before each other. And you do it before these witnesses. And God will honor those words because God is a God of faith and faith speaks words. So if you look into her eyes, you'll say this. Say, I will. I will. Offer myself completely to you. Offer myself completely to you. Michelle. Michelle. To be your husband in marriage. To be your husband in marriage. I promise to continue. I promise to continue. To love you with all my heart. To love you with all my heart. And to be true. And to be true. Faithful. Faithful. Patient. Patient. Kind. Kind. And unselfish. Unselfish. In this love. In this love. I promise to continue. I promise to continue. To stand beside you always. To stand beside you always. In times of joy. In times of joy. In times of trial. In times of trial. And in times of sorrow. In times of sorrow. I dedicate our marriage. I dedicate our marriage. And our home. And our home. To the Lordship. To the Lordship. Of Jesus Christ. Of Jesus Christ. I pledge myself. I pledge myself. And all that I am. And all that I am. In love to you. In love to you. Wow. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Okay, Michelle, now it's your turn. I, my, I Michelle, offer myself completely to you. I, Michelle, offer myself completely to you. I will be your wife in marriage. I will be your wife in marriage. I promise to continue to love you. I promise to continue to love you. With all my heart. With all my heart. And to be true. And to be true. Faithful. Faithful. Patient. Patient. Kind. Kind. And unselfish in this love. And unselfish in this love. I promise to continue to stand beside you. I promise to continue to stand beside you. Always. Always. In times of joy. In times of joy. In times of trial. In times of trial. In times of sorrow. In times of sorrow. I dedicate our marriage. I dedicate our marriage. And our home. And our home. To the Lordship. To the Lordship. Of Jesus Christ. Of Jesus Christ. I pledge myself. I pledge myself. And all that I am. And all that I am. In love to you. In love to you. Amen. Amen. Wow. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Do you feel that? Yeah. All right, now you can face me again. It's powerful. Well, um, the rings I now need. Thank you. I love talking about the rings. I want to give you the box back though. <laughs> Thank you. I want to hold up Will's ring just because it's big. You see this ring? Think about this ring. Why do we wear a ring? Why do we even put anything on our finger? You ever, you ever think about that? Because what we're doing here is establishing covenant between a man and a woman. And before Almighty God, they say, God, we're cementing our lives to you and committing our lives one to another. And this ring 
is a sign to themselves and to the world that they are in holy covenant. And God's used signs throughout the Bible. One of the first signs he ever used to show his covenant was when the earth was flooded and Noah, after the world was enough drained off that he could get out of the ark, he said, the Lord caused a rainbow to come across the whole sky. He said, this is a sign. When you see the rainbow, you'll know there's a sign of a covenant. I will never destroy the earth with water again. Whenever you see the rainbow, that's God's covenant. And so the ring is God's covenant that you have made between each other. It's round, meaning they'll never end. That's what God, God wants. It's of gold, it will never rust or tarnish. It'll endure. And so this ring, when you see the ring, you say, I remember that day I made covenant with my wife. I remember that day I made covenant with my husband. And it's ratified by the Holy Spirit. Because it's according to the Word of God. Alright? So we're going to begin. You're going to put this ring on the shelf. So you can turn to face her. On her left hand, fourth finger, and as you do so, you repeat on the same following: I will commit my life to this holy covenant of marriage. And as I place this ring on your finger, I seal this covenant with this sign that will always be true to you. And faithful so death parts us in Jesus name we're here to put it on our feet Prosper them financially, prosper them socially, prosper them physically. May 
no sickness or disease come near their dwelling. And Lord, raise them up to be a light and example. Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, will I get this by the Holy Ghost? Amen. Much prayer. I'm over you too, but I might want to get because I know your family. Much prayer has gone over you. This day is brought about because people have sought your blessing. And you push through many obstacles that the enemy has set before you. But this day is a day of triumph for the both of you. For you put the enemy under your feet. And you lifted you up Jesus even through this way. In a church where we honor his presence. And I pray blessing for all my heart. Excited for the future. May I just for a minute just say something? Um, I've known this family, I've known John, who's gone to be with the Lord no more. My brother I've met once, some friends. But I feel by the Holy Spirit, I want to just say these words that God loves you. I don't know where everybody is today with their walk with God. But a lot of lies are told about God. God loves you. God never condemns you. But the only way to reach Him, we need a mediator. We all come short of what God wants us to do. But there was a man named Jesus who went to a cross 2,000 years ago. The Son of God. He took on the sins of the world, of every human being. And if anyone will call upon his name, just say, Jesus, I'm sorry. I ask for you to come into my life, to change me. Make me the person you designed me to be. And he will come in he will cleanse you of every sin. He will wrap you in his arms. And you will know his love like you've never known love before. It's not hard. It's very simple. It's not even difficult. But you have to just say it. So I want to just pray for you. I love my people here, down here. If this is alright, Michelle, you will. I just feel the Spirit of God just to reach out. If we could just close our eyes just for a minute. To honor His presence. Jesus, I thank You for Your reality. You could show up and show Yourself off in the physical dimension if You wanted to. You could just step out in the Spirit and show people how real You are. But we can also sense it in the Spirit, Your reality. And so, Lord, I pray for each one here today from the sound of my voice, wherever they are with God or their journey in life, that they reach up to you and say, Jesus, I give my life to you. I turn from things in this world and I turn to you. Wash me, make me clean with your wonderful blood that was shed on the cross. Fill me with your precious Holy Spirit. And let me live a life walking with you. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Well, now it's my joy. Oh, it's not my joy. You may kiss your beautiful wife. <laughs> Gentlemen, I want to present to you Mr. and Mrs. Will and Michelle
Okay.